Okay, let's take a look at the last section of this chapter that we'll cover on return on assets, return on stockholders' equity. So these are two ratios that are very important. Oftentimes, shareholders, creditors, they will be using these to decide whether or not to invest in the business or borrow money to this business. So again, a lot of the ratios are using different aspects to analyze the company um, from different perspectives. So earlier we talked about inventory. There is also inventory turnover rate. And we talked about accounts receivables. We talked about some of the ratios there. Here, this is more of an overview of the company's um, return and income over how they use the assets or the return and income over how they have been using the capital that shareholders contributed to the business. So the first ratio here, rate of return on assets, the return basically is referring to what they have generated, meaning the net income and interest that they have gave out to shareholders and creditors together. Okay, so numerator, you can see the numerator part is referring to the return, and then total assets, we measure it by average assets. Whenever you see average assets, that basically means, or average of anything, that's the beginning plus ending divided by two. Okay, so this ratio, the numerator is the return to shareholders. In general, net income is considered the return to shareholders. Even though they're not getting this, uh, keeping it in their pocket, but because net income on a yearly basis affects stock price as well. So shareholders, if they purchase a, a few number of shares, that is definitely will be affected by how the company is operating. And also dividends later on will be coming from retained earnings. So retained earnings is an accumulation of net income. Okay, so we use net income as a return measure for shareholders. And interest expense, obviously, this is the part paid to creditor. So this, if you borrow money to the company, you'll be receiving the return in a form of interest expense. Okay, so interest expense is the return to creditor. Net income, we use it as measuring the return to shareholders in general. Since net income basically represents how the company is operating. The more there is there, that means the company is doing better in terms of internally generating their fund. Remember, net income comes from income statement. Net income comes from, generally speaking, is sales the revenue minus all the different types of expenses. Okay, so it's their internally generated income based on providing services or providing goods. So we measure the relationship between average re return to shareholders and creditors, these two parties, compared to the total amount of assets, the average amount of assets that company has. So this gives us the relationship between how the company has been using these assets to turn into return to these two parties. That's what this ratio is trying to tell us. Again, how the company is using the assets to generate return to shareholders and to creditors. This is what rate of return, um, rate of return on total assets means. So here's an example, assuming that beginning of this year, the total assets shown on balance sheet altogether, including current asset, long-term assets, all different kinds that we talked about in chapter eight and nine, assuming altogether the value is $843 million, beginning of balance sheet, meaning last year end. And assuming this year end, altogether we have $822 million of total assets. Okay, so these two, average them out, we add them together, divided by two, this will give you the average total assets value. And we compare this against the total return that we got. So the return again, we pull from income statement, there's $33 million of net income and $22 million of interest that you gave to shareholders, uh, gave to creditors. Okay, so 33 million is the net income, 22 million is interest that you give to creditors either short-term notes payable, creditor, long-term notes payable, bondholders, all together, interest is 22 million. Okay, so this ratio at the end will tell you per dollar of total assets how much return is generated. So this 0 0.06 means for every dollar of total assets invested in the company, it turns into 0 0.06 of return of net income plus interest on average. Now this ratio, since it's a return ratio, the numerator is net income, the larger the better. Always if you compare across the years, if it's increasing, that's a better sign. Decreasing, that's a bad sign. But we do have a rule of thumb to this. 
Okay, about 10% rate of return on assets is considered, generally speaking, good. Okay, for its different industry, may have a slightly different rate, but on average, we would say 10%, meaning if every dollar of total assets turns into um, 0 0.1 dollar, then that be basically means this ROA is considered pretty strong above that. Okay, but the higher, the better. So it's net income, dollar amount plus interest expense over average total assets. So beginning plus ending divided by two is this part. This is ROA. Okay. So the result for this example, is it good or bad? Strong or weak? The result for this is 0 0.066, which turns into 6.6%, .6%, which is lower than the 10% rule of thumb. Okay, so this is an example. This example in this slide is an example of a weak ROA, meaning that the assets that they own is a lot higher than the return that they actually received after a year of providing services, providing goods. So this is a weak ROA. If we want to compare this ratio to the same industry, other companies, if they have 12%, 13%, those are the companies that are doing a better job using their assets. 